I allow myself in my classroom, keeping well inside of what is said to be customary among college professors. One jest a year. When I first meet the new freshman class, for I could not bear to leave such precious material wholly to the most perfect assistant, I question them. Suppose now you are set, as you were at the examination for admission the other day, to tell me the meaning of a sentence in a book you never saw, say, a narration of Cicero. How do you proceed to get at the writer's meaning? There is at once a chorus of voices, for they are crammed for that question, having learned printed directions, as we have seen, in the first books they studied. First find the subject, three quarters of them say, predicate, the other quarter. Now here, I say to them, is an unhappy difference of opinion, about first principles, in a matter of everyday practice, and of very serious importance. Which is right? They do not know. Which do you suppose the Romans, who heard the oration delivered in the forum, first hunted up? The subject, or the predicate? That little jest, simple as it is, always meets with great success. For it not only raises a laugh, of no value in itself, but it shows at once, even to a freshman, the entire absurdity of trying to read Latin by a hunting up first of either his subject or his predicate, and so enlists his sympathy in favor of trying some other way, if any can be shown him. But at the same time, it proves to me that the method taught at the most critical of all periods, the beginning, is still wrong. Only in late years, and very rarely, does some student answer my question with, first read the first Latin word without translating it, then the second, then the third, and so on to the end, taking in all the possible constructions of every word, while barring out at once the impossible, and above all, erring, if anywhere, in the direction of keeping the mind in suspense unnecessarily long, waiting, at least, until a sure solution has been given by the sentence itself.